Well, thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, Armando and Frank have both done a great job of giving you some background on what's going on and why education is so important. Uh, on your chair, if you're sitting in the first four rows, you'll see uh, our, our Florida Citizens Alliance blue trifold. I'm going to ask you to open it up. You'll see the picture that's here on the screen. I don't want to explain that because it's so critical. It's, it just capitalizes everything that we've been talking about relative to education. Uh, are, you for, are you all familiar with Dennis Prager, Prager University? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this chart uh, is a study they did a week after the, the 2016 election, which Trump won, thank God. Um, and it shows how 18 to 25 year olds actually voted by state. And if you take how they voted and you then use that as the block to determine the electoral college outcome, would have been 504 blue to 23 red. Now most people say, gee, that's no surprise. So what are we doing about it, folks, right? I would argue, and I do, I, I'm again very passionate about this, so maybe I should apologize up front, but I would argue that nothing else you're doing is more important than engaging and stopping the indoctrination that's taking place in our K through 12 education. We see it on our college, college campuses, but it doesn't start there. We actually had a bill by a Republican senator introduced last year, it didn't pass, for pre-K that required every student from three years on to be to, to be indoctrinated with K, uh, Common Core curriculum, to get assigned a data code so they could track them all through their pre-K, K through 12, and four years into the, in the, in the workforce. This is a major endemic problem. So that uh, is the background. Let me see if I can, oops. Uh, I think everybody in here knows that we've got a problem. Our focus in, in Florida Citizens Alliance is solutions. Um, we believe Florida kids deserve better, and we work aggressively to provide solutions that focus on improving and enhancing student learning. Uh, we work in three pillars very quickly. Legislative pillar, and Armando said we lobby, which is not quite correct legally. We're a citizen advocacy group, okay? We're not lobbyists. None of us get paid, we're all volunteers. All of our trips to, uh, to Tallahassee are on our own dime. All of our trips around the state are on our own dime. So we are uh, an advocacy, a citizen advocacy group. And by the way, we have about 80 different groups across the state. Some of you in here lead those groups, so thank you. Um, and we spend a, a, a great deal of time uh, trying to put solutions in front of our legislators. So that's pillar number one. Pillar number two is uh, we have now, uh, does everybody in here know Karen Sharn? Karen Sharn, a, a lot of raised hands. She's been very active in the uh, Agenda 21, Agenda 30 movement, uh, an educator herself. Uh, she's joined Florida Citizens Alliance on our advisory board, and together we're gonna co-lead a project. Right now we have th volunteers in 30 of our 67 counties who are we're helping to establish watchdog committees in those counties so you can start to hold your school boards accountable, okay? Uh, the third pillar uh, that we work in actively is uh, what I'm characterizing as universal parental choice, alternatives. We applaud people who homeschool their students, but I can't tell you how many times I run into a homeschool student or parent that says, oops, not my problem. My kid's going to a homeschool, or is being homeschooled. Or my kid's going to a, Har uh, a Hillsdale Charter School, so not my problem, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and without being negative, I say, you know, that's great that you've run to the ark. Use a biblical term, you've run to the ark. But when your kids graduate, they're gonna grow up in the environment where 66 million kids are now giving away their rights because they've been indoctrinated in school. So, uh, so what, do we, what do we do? 
Uh, we focus on four, in four areas. We spend about 90% of our time on K through 12 education, uh, legislative actions, uh, factual and unbiased research. We've done some great research. Um, we have developed a, 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 a Excel spreadsheet, for lack of a better term, that takes your high schools in your county, each one of them, school by school, and compares the student result in learning, uh, in math and reading on a nationally normed test result basis versus our pr proprietary F FSA test. And what I would tell you across Florida, and this is almost unilateral by county, some counties are much worse than what I'm about to say, 50% of our high school, 2.8 million kids in, in, in uh, Florida, high school, uh, all kids, 50% of them cannot read or do math at grade level. I'm going to say that again, and we've documented it, but we have 50%. Now, I can't tell you how many parents say, my kid's going to an A school or a B school. I just saw a DOE presentation, a Florida Department of Education presentation to the Senate last week that said 56% of our schools are A and B schools. They grade on a curve. You remember when you went to school? You were expected to know 100% of the information, and if you only knew 75, you got an F or less, right? To get an A on eight elements of, of learning, 62%. They're F schools, folks. And we're being propagandized that these are A and B schools when you compare nationally normed test results to our Florida results. I was an IBM executive and we used to have a saying, only a fool can jump over their own measurements. <laughs> Right? So when Florida sets its own measurements on, a, on, on this propagandized model, graded on the curve, they call them cut scores, we declare all of our schools to be great schools, 56% A and B schools. And yet 50% of our kids can't read and do math at grade level. Uh, you, can, you can see there what motivates us. Um, we assert aggressively at every level uh, with every one of our legislators and school board members that uh, the America's uh, school system, K through 12 school system, is failing our students academically, civically, and morally. And so what we're about is attempting to fix that through the solutions I mentioned. Now, I'm gonna do something, there's a few copies here in the back room and I'll tell you how you can find this, but uh, we've done a, de a detailed analysis in, of 70 textbooks in Collier and Lee County, and then we sent them to five other counties, including, including Brevard County, Volusia, and over 90% of the materials in this report are in every one of our counties. And how can I say that with absolute firm conviction? It's because we all buy from the same three sources. Pearson, have you all heard of Pearson? Oh, yeah. Pearson, by their own admission on their website, now owns 80% of all instructional material delivery across the U.S. So when I say they're in our schools, we've documented, we only looked in seven counties and we found them in seven counties, over 90%. Uh, so there's a report here that you can get on our website. I'll tell you how in a minute. There's a few copies in the back. Uh, but I want to I want to draw just a couple of, of, of uh, things to your attention. The first page is English language arts. These are the novels our kids read. Uh, Florida Department of Education has formed an alliance with a group called Fame. It's a Florida Association of um, Media uh, Media edu in Education. That should tell you right away that we got a problem, right? Every year, they put out a Sunshine Reader List for grades three through eight. And on that reader list is 15 books that they require kids pick four books off of and read and do some kind of an interaction report. Parents trust that and go to those sites. Now, to get on that reader list, guess what? The book has to be fiction. That's okay, right? Novels, English language arts, fiction. That's pretty good. It has to be written by a North American author. That gets a little sketchy. And the book has to be published 2010 or later. 
Think about what we've just been talking about, about the deep state. The book has to be written and, and, and published 2010 or later. This is a demic. Now, I'm gonna, uh, uh, we've also done a deep dive on the pornography that's in our schools. And if I blush, I apologize ahead of time, but I want you to really understand what's, what's going on in our schools. So I'm gonna read you a part of an excerpt, and we've documented this in a number of books. I'm only gonna read you one. It's called The Beautiful Bastard. It's recommended reading for 11-year-olds. Let's say that again, recommended reading for 11-year-olds. They wouldn't let us read it on the Senate floor because uh, they'd lose their FCC license. Okay. The book is written by some uh, lady called Christine, Christina Lauren. He, uh, and this is now a quote. He leaned close enough to bite my shoulder, whispering, you fucking tease. Unable to get close enough, I quickened my pace on his zipper, shoved his pants and boxers to the floor, and gave his cock a heart squeeze. Do I need to read any more? 11 years old. I had a mother call me last week after we did an, a, 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 an article, or we did an interview with AP News, and they did a very negative hit piece on what we're doing, accusing us of being science deniers. I had a mother call me last week, and I spent 45 minutes listening to her just vent. Her story was uh, three weeks prior, and she didn't find out about it for two weeks. Three weeks prior, uh, her, her nine-year-old, nine-year-old, grade three, uh, in a Palm Beach County uh, elementary school. They had three elementary classes, almost 300 students in those classes combined. They rotated them through the library and the library and read them an LGBT book. Oh my. An LGBT book. The mother found out about it when her child came to her asking these really strange questions. No opt out, no notification to the parents, Folks, this is what's going on in our schools. They're teaching our kids socialism versus uh, free markets. We've documented it in this report. They're teaching our, our, our kids that uh, the, the First Amendment, freedom of religion, and, and you, you all know the freedom of religion, right? Congress shall make no law respecting the freedom of religion and prohibiting uh, thereof. In, in, in our textbooks, they define the First Amendment freedom of religion as freedom to worship. That's how the left is redefining our founding values and principles. Just some of many different examples. And then, of course, you've got Common Core Math, which totally destroys the reality of math for, for the vast, vast majority of kids. So it's, it's endemic, and, and the only thing we know to do is to fight. So, the way you can find, you know, there's a few copies back there, but the way you can find this is if you write it down, go to our floridacitizensalliance.com website, and in the search bar, uh, bar up top, just type in uh, Objectionable Materials Report. Objectionable Materials Report. Now, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I know uh, we've got a, a shortage of time here. We focus on solutions. Instruction materials bill, CS989, uh, after eight trips to Tallahassee, some of you uh, went with us, many of you, uh, how many here have signed up on Florida Citizens Alliance webpage as a subscriber? I'm gonna implore every one of you to do that today, and I'm gonna have a very specific reason uh, in, in, that I'll unveil in just a minute. We, uh, we got a bill signed by the governor, it's called 989, Instruction Materials Bill, prior to July, uh, I don't, I, are there any folks in here that have parents or grandkids in Florida schools? Okay. Prior to July 1st, if you were a grandparent or a citizen paying taxes, you had no right to object to the garbage that's in our schools. You have no right. After July 1st, you do. That's the bill we got the governor to sign. Not only do they have to give you access so you can pro-offer evidence if you have an objection, they have to now hold a public hearing with an independent hearing officer. Now, we didn't get everything we wanted in that bill uh, by a long shot, but it's a start. The, and so now that becomes the basis by which we're forming these 30 watchdog groups I told you. So uh, it, it, we ask you to go sign up on our website. If you're interested in getting involved in one of those, 
we're going to train you in how to review textbooks. We're working with Truth in Textbooks out of Texas. Uh, they have an eight-week training course, one hour a week, plus you, you'll go through a mock review. And then uh, we become much more credible, instead of just opinion, we become much more credi uh, credible in our um, evaluation of the textbooks. Uh, they just did social studies. They're going to be buying those books over the next three years, so we'll be reviewing some of those textbooks. And they're starting with science this year. And so you're going to see you're going to see indoctrination on global warming. You're going to see indoctrination on evolution. And so we need folks like yourself who, um, to, to get involved. We have two bills that are filed uh, in the Florida House, and one of those is in the Senate. It, the other one will be filed in the Senate. Uh, they focus on the Department of Education side of the equation. I told you we got a bill that focuses on the local level, so you can get engaged. But unfortunately, the Florida Department of Education is still uh, condoning and adopting most, almost all of these same materials. So we've we're focused, we got a bill um, uh, that's uh, been filed in the, uh, in the House on, on the DOE education, it's 827, by Representative Donalds. And Senator Lee is going to file that bill. Uh, they're trying to decide where they wait till it gets amended for some things we want in it. Now, this is where I need your help. Please, every one of you go home and subscribe to our website. Three o'clock Monday morning, so when you get up Monday morning, you're gonna have an action alert in your reader if, you're, if you follow us. Doesn't cost anything to follow us. And in that action alert, we're gonna ask you to send an email. We make it very easy for you. All you gotta do is put your name and your uh, uh, county in, and it will target Representative Donalds. He's sponsoring this bill. We want it to be a positive encouragement for him to add four items to that bill to make it meaningful, okay? The bill only has about 30% of what we think should be in that bill. We outline in, the, in what, what you're gonna get, what's in the bill, bullet points, and what we want in the bill. And then we want you to send him a letter of encouragement. Don't, don't go beat him up at this point, right? Thank him for doing what he's done so far, but we need to give him some courage and really his leadership, some courage to take on the DOE. So I really ask for your help there. The other bill that we got is the, what we're calling a meter exceeds bill. Uh, you all know what common core standards are, right? Anybody doesn't know what common core standards are? Anybody in here, uh, does everybody realize that in Florida we have common core standards that have just been renamed next generation Sunshine State standards, right? We, for three years, tried to get those ripped out. Jeb Bush's influence is still very strong with our legislators here. So what we've decided to do is, is get a bill filed that meet or exceeds next generation Sunshine State stats, standards. So what this does now, instead of letting all the school districts say, well, I'm just implementing what the state tells me I have to do, now the, the, the responsibility and accountability by us beating up on them brings it back to the school board because now they will have legal authorization, lawful authorization to exceed Common Core standards. Okay, so that means that, uh, that they could go out if they choose to and select uh, Massachusetts Miracle ELA before 2009, before Common Core. It means they could go adopt Singapore math. They're no longer being drugged down. Next generation Sunshine states become the baseline. Uh, those, uh, th those bill numbers are up there on the chart. The Senate bill, uh, Baxley filed 966, which is that bill, uh, and House Bill 825 out of Marion County by Representative Charlie Stone. Now, we've still got a whole lot of work to get those bills passed. The establishment's gonna be big time against us, so that's why joining and being a, a supporter on our website you'll be getting action alerts as we go through the process, the committee reviews, so you can let your legislators know why, what they need to do to, because you're putting pressure on them to do what, uh, what we want done. I told you about the 30 watchdog county groups. Uh, once you join, send us an email. We'll link you up with one in your county. If we don't have one, we're gonna ask you to be a leader and help start one. And we'll mentor you, we'll do whatever we can to help you get started, but it has to be a local effort. There's another bill that uh, I'm not gonna have time to go in here. It's called House Bill One. 
It is actually sponsored by Representative Donalds, but it's a leadership bill. He's actually doing it. This is the request of Speaker Corcoran, who, by the way, is going to run for governor. And we, at Florida Citizens Lines, don't endorse candidates, but pay real close attention. He's a good guy. Okay? Corcoran. Um, it's called a Scholarship of Hope Bill, and very simply what it does is it breaks the economic model for establishment government schools. Because it says if you're a parent or, or you have a child in a school who is subject to bullying of many different forms, uh, the child or you can file, uh, file a formal complaint. The school principal has 15 days to satisfactorily um, comply with your requirement, what, we, what you're requesting, your action, and if they don't, you can, you're going to get a scholarship to take the kid out of school, that school, send him to another government school, or a private school of their choice. It breaks the financial um, mechanics of our establishment schools. So we're going to be big supporters of that bill. Uh, that is HB1. Okay, there's no, uh, I'm going to wrap up here. There's no several bullet for what we're doing, folks. This is really hard work. As you've heard from uh, Armando and Frank, uh, this has been happening uh, ever since Dewey. And if you look at it internationally before that, um, we have got a huge uphill battle. There's no silver bullet, but if we don't fight, what's the outcome? Uh, uh, we've got training. We'll help train you. It's, it, it's, it's, we started out with 50 people in Florida taking this training class that many of us just completed, and we lost, we're now down to 22. Because it's rigorous. This isn't easy. But we will train you and give you the confidence in how to evaluate these books. You can document them. Once you, uh, once you document a social studies book in your county, the likelihood that it's in every other county in the state and the likelihood it's in every other state is very high. So you don't have to go do 100 books in your county. You'll get assigned a book in your county and we'll have 30 teams who do 29 other books and then we share. Right? It's, it's called um, leveraging our resource. We need you to challenge your school board and your legislature at every step of the road. I always say with legislators, and I've said this to a number of them, so I'm not speaking out of school, you do as little as possible to get as much credit as you can so you get reelected. So it's up to us to put the pressure on them to do the right thing. And, and it's a, it is a fight for our kids. I'm going to wrap up with this chart uh, and implore you to get engaged. We all know the problem. Everybody, I, I mean, literally almost everybody I talk to, I run into a few people who think public government schools are okay, but almost everybody I talk to says, especially when they see what's going on in our universities, right? They say, oh, yeah, I know. So what are we gonna do about it, right? What are we gonna do about it? We're solutions-based. We invite you to join us. We invite you to invite your friends to join us. We invite you to, if you're leading a group, uh, Jack, I know, and his team, in, in, in um, uh, just forgot your county, Highlands. Highlands County. In Highlands County have been great supporters. They got their representative to support 989 last year with just a phone call and a little bit of pressure, right? Because they built a relationship with them. So it, it is tough work. Um, Bob Roots here someplace, uh, his America, uh, he's, he's got the uh, American Patriot News. There's some, uh, some uh, papers back here, they print those the last time I knew you're printing those in some 30 counties, or at least a large number of counties. Um, there are lots of th resources here for you to use, um, but you've got you to gotta get engaged, and we're offering you an opportunity to do that. We yes? Paper. Oh, we're circulating now to Dale here on uh, the, the uh, Heartland Herald. Heartland Herald. Heartland Herald. Okay. Yep, there's, there's some on the, on the table. So I've uh, run a little bit over here. I apologize for that. Uh, we, we're set up on the back. If I can just close with, uh, we're a not-for-profit, a 501c3. Back on that table, we're bringing Denise D'Souza into Naples. 
on the 5th. Um, Naples is a hike for some of you. Please come. But if you can't come, let me tell you what you can do. Rather than just saying, I can't come, it's too far, you can sponsor a parent and a homeschool student for 200 bucks. They both come. Okay? You can sponsor two vets for 300 bucks. Okay? So please, please, uh, give, us, uh, give me a call. You got my email address, there's cards in the back. We'll figure out how, if, if you can come, fantastic. If you can't come, there are many ways you can help, and uh, this uh, will be a fundraiser for us to support what we do going forward, and it is tax deductible, so thank you.